In this video, we're going to learn about void pointers in C. So void pointers are like generic pointers. They're pointers which are not associated with a data type. So you've probably seen pointer variables that are associated with a data type. For example, a pointer to an int. So here, if we declare an int variable a, and we assign it the value five, then we could declare a pointer to an int variable called x with int star x. And we could assign it to point to a with is equal to and a. So the and operator is going to give us the memory address of a, and we're going to assign that to x. And we say that x points to a when we do this. Now, what x is really storing is a memory address because x is a pointer. If it's a pointer variable, it stores a memory address, whether it's an int pointer or a void pointer or a double pointer. The int type here is telling us what x is pointing to. So x is pointing to an int value, in this case, a. We could use this int value by dereferencing x. So here we could have printf, and then we'll have percent %d backslash n to output an int value followed by a new line. And then we'll have here star x. So star x is going to dereference x. It's going to get the value that x is pointing to, the value stored in the memory address that x is storing, which is going to be five. And we'll output that here. So if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here five. So there's an advantage to having pointers with types because here we know x is a pointer that's supposed to point to an int. But if we had a double variable, let's say double b is equal to three, and then we try to assign to x the memory address of b, the compiler is going to flag this because this type here tells the compiler this pointer should be storing a pointer to an int value, not a double like b. So let's save compile and run the program. And now we'll get a warning here. The warning says incompatible pointer types initializing in pointer with an expression of type double pointer. So having pointers with a type is advantageous to preventing bugs from occurring in our program because the compiler can use this information to give us warnings if we might be doing something wrong. Void pointers like other pointers store a memory address but void pointers are not associated with a data type. So for example, we could have down here void star p to declare a void pointer called p. So it's the star here that makes this variable p a pointer. And what void means is this pointer can store memory addresses of any type of data. So for example, we could have here p is equal to and a, and this is going to be okay. We can save compile and run the program and we're not going to have any warnings or errors. We could also have P is equal to and B, and this is also going to be okay. So here we assigned P the memory address of an int value a, and here we assigned P the memory address of a double value B, and both are okay. If we save compile and run the program, it's going to compile again without any warnings or errors. So void pointers can store the memory address of different types of values. Void pointers can be used to make data structures and functions which are more generic. So for example, the function malloc, which is used to dynamically allocate memory on the heap, returns a void pointer. So we can use the function malloc to dynamically allocate space for an array of ints or an array of doubles, or an array of some type of struct. And it's going to work in all of those cases because malloc returns a void pointer. We could then have int star a is equal to malloc with size of int multiplied by 10. And here, malloc is going to allocate enough space to store 10 int values so this can be an array of 10 int values, and malloc is going to return a void pointer that we can assign to A. 
we don't actually have to typecast the pointer that's returned from malloc. So in C++, you have to have int star here, and you have to typecast this void pointer to an int pointer. But in C, we don't need to do this. So because malloc returns a void pointer, we can use malloc to allocate space for different types of things. So here we could have size of double, and this would then allocate space for one double value. And we could assign the void pointer returned by malloc to a double pointer variable. So malloc itself becomes a more generic function that can be used to do things for different types of data because the function returns a void pointer. And that pointer could be a pointer to anything. There's other cases where void pointers allow us to make functions which can work with different types of data. So for example, in C, there's a quick sort function in the standard library. And the quick sort function looks like this, where the first argument to the function is a void pointer. That's a void pointer to some array of elements that should be sorted by this function. Because it's a void pointer, the elements could be of any type. So this function could be used to sort double values or int values, or maybe an array of structs. This function here is also going to help out. So this here is actually a function pointer. The function qsort is passed a pointer to a function as an argument. And this function accepts two void pointer arguments this comparison function is used to carry out the quicksort algorithm, which sorts these elements here. And because we have two void pointers here, these pointers can point to elements of any type in this array of elements of any type. So sort of like malloc, this quicksort function has been made more generic in terms of the types of data it can work with. Now there are a few important things about void pointers. One is that we can't dereference void pointers. Let's try that. Remember that b is a double variable. And so right now, p is storing the memory address of a double variable b. Let's try to output that double by dereferencing p. We'll have printf and then percent %f to output a double, followed by a new line with backslash n. And then we'll have star p here to dereference p. If we save compile and run the program, we'll get an error. It says here, argument type void is incomplete. So we can't dereference a void pointer. When we dereference a pointer, we say that we get an object of the type that's associated with that pointer. But in the case of a void pointer, void is an incomplete type. So if we dereference the pointer, it's not going to work. Now, the other thing with void pointers is we can't always use pointer arithmetic with void pointers. It depends on the type of compiler we have. So let's go over pointer arithmetic. Let's declare a car array called string. And this car array is going to store a string, string. Then we'll create a car pointer variable C. And we'll have C point to the second character in this character array string. So we'll have here string at the index one. So this here is going to give us the memory address of this T character here. And we could dereference C to put T. We could have here printf and then C colon percent C to put a character backslash N for a new line. And then we'll have star C to dereference C. If we save compile and run the program, we'll get here lowercase t. We could use pointer arithmetic with this c car pointer variable. We could have here c is equal to c plus one. What this is going to do is not add one to the memory address that's stored by c. What it's going to do is advance the pointer one character in memory. So c is now going to point to the next character in memory, which is going to be this R character here. So if we output the character that C is pointing to, 
we'll now get R. Let's try that. We'll copy this and paste it here to open the character that C is now pointing to. We'll save compile and run the program. And now we do get R. So with non-void pointers, we can use what's called pointer arithmetic to manipulate what the pointer is pointing to. With void pointers, according to the official C standard, we can't use pointer arithmetic. But that said, the GNU C compiler and many other compilers do support using pointer arithmetic with void pointers. So for example, we could have P is equal to and string at the index one. And here we've made our void pointer P point to the second character T in this string. We could then have P is equal to P plus one. And here we're using pointer arithmetic with a void pointer. So this is what is not officially supported by the C standard. This means we can't count on this working across different C compilers. My compiler does support using pointer arithmetic with void pointers, and it considers the size of void to be one byte, or more accurately, one car sized unit. So what that means is this here, P plus one, is going to have P point to the next character in the string here, R. We could output this character by first typecasting P to a car pointer and then dereferencing that pointer. So we could have here printf and then p colon percent c to put a character and backslash n for a new line. Now we can't just dereference p. We can't have here star p. We've already tried that. But what we could do is have a typecast. We could have here car star to typecast p to the type car pointer. Then we could dereference this car pointer to put the character that P is pointing to. If we save, compile, and run the program, we'll now get that P is pointing to R. So this is how we can use void pointers in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.